There are so many different brands and flavors of both tonic and even other mixes these days. It can be super hard to work out which ones pair best with any given bottle of gin. And then we haven't even talked about cocktails yet. There are literally thousands of recipes out there you can find. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my top simple hack on how to work out the most delicious ways to drink that bottle of gin that you have in front of you. And we're starting right now. G'day folks, my name's Tim and welcome to Tim and Tonic where we discover the world's best gins and how to drink them. Okay, so let's just dive right in here because the number one rule is probably not quite what you're expecting. And this trumps all other rules and that's drink however you like to drink the best. There is absolutely no right way or wrong way to drink. Taste is always a matter of personal preference. It's true that everyone has a completely different perception of flavor because, well, Science. At the end of the day, you're paying your hard earned money for all these delicious products. So drink it however makes you happy. Now with that out of the way, let me reveal to you my simple little hack, my little general rule of thumb that'll help you to pair the most delicious gin with the most delicious drinks. And this rule of thumb works for everything. Cocktails, mixes and garnishes, all the same. And that's this, compliment or contrast. What does that mean? Let's break it down a little. So the first thing is we're taking the gin as the starting point. Let's get an example over here. We have some aviation. Now what we need to do is pour a little bit into our glass. To be able to know what drinks are gonna pair best with the gin, you kind of need to know what it tastes like. And there's two ways to do that. You can smell it and taste it like I've been doing right here, or you can look it up online, have a look at some tasty notes, and also see which botanicals they use in the gym. But sometimes I find that's not as reliable. Tasting it for me is always the best because sometimes, you know, you can see a recipe, but everything is greater than the sum of its parts. So with aviation, always what I get, it's quite strong on the spice botanicals, the juniper a little bit lower with a little subtle bit of lavender that they use in there. So a tiny, tiny, tiny little floral edge. Now let's come back to that idea of complement or contrast. If we were going for something that we wanted to complement in this gin, I would go for the more subtle flavors that you find and enhance them. Why? If it's a really big, bold, strong flavor, it's already the main flavor. If you wanna create a complex, delicious drink, you don't necessarily need to add more of that because it's already the strongest flavor. It's just gonna become overpowering and one dimensional. What you want is complexity. So I tasted or smelt a little bit of subtle lavender in there. So I know that if I use a floral ingredient or a floral mixer, it's gonna taste delicious. We're not reinventing the wheel here. The distillers have already done all the hard work to find out which botanicals go together. We're just gonna make them all shine. So using the aviation gin as an example of that complement rule, maybe for a tonic, you wanna pair it with something like, I don't know, an elderflower tonic, floral, tonic, delicious or on the other hand, a cocktail. Now, there's a reason why this gin is called Aviation. It was designed for the Aviation cocktail, which guess what? It's a floral cocktail. It's got in it creme de violette, which is kind of like a violet liqueur. So the other option we have is contrasting and I'm gonna need another example here. So we have some Malfi gin. Now we don't need to pour out any Malfi. I'm very familiar with what this one tastes like. If you want to see the reviews for any of these gins, I've done all of them. I'll pop them down in the comments below. So this Malfi is the lemon version. It tastes super, super strong of lemon. The way I describe it is kind of like a limoncello, but without the sugar and sweetness. Now, yes, if you really wanted to go down the pathway of complimenting, absolutely. You could pair this with a lemon flavored mixer, a sour style cocktail. You could even go for a lemon wedge as a garnish, however you want. It's gonna work just fine. But on this channel, we're all about leveling up your drinks. That's the easy option. I'm gonna tell you the more delicious option. And that is to create complexity and balance instead of going with that really strong, powerful flavor, which you're gonna taste it no matter what you pair it with. We're gonna go in the other direction and try and add some layers of complexity which offset that big flavor. So that can be a little bit of a trickier concept to understand because we're actually gonna put in the opposite of what this gin tastes like. Okay, so let's use a gin and tonic as an example here. So for me, citrus flavors go amazingly well 
with herbaceous flavors, but it's not something that you really taste in this gin. And again, we don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Have a look to cooking, recipes, what you already do in your own home. That's gonna give you some inspiration. For the tonic, maybe you wanna go with something more classic, like an Indian tonic, so that quinine bitterness kind of balances out again, or even a Mediterranean tonic, which again, has a little bit of a herbaceous edge. Now I know this idea of contrasting is a little bit more complicated to understand, so I'm gonna throw one more example in there, and we have Four Pillars Bloody Shiraz Gin. I had to include one from Australia, and this is great because, yes, it's quite unique, and it uses Shiraz grapes, but it's made in a slow gin style. So if you wanna try this idea with a slow gin, it's gonna work great too. So slow gin, or in this case, Shiraz gin, bloody Shiraz gin, all of it is a little bit sweeter than other styles of gin, like these ones, which tend to be drier. So taking that idea of contrast, we don't wanna to add too many sweet flavors, we want to add more sour flavors because sour balances out sweetness. You can also use bitterness to offset sweetness to a degree too. So for a mixer with a slow gin or this bloody Shiraz gin, something that would be absolutely perfect to balance out the sweetness would be a lemon tonic or a bitter lemon. You have the acidity, you have the bitterness, perfect to balance out the sweetness and it complements the fruity notes at the same time. And same thing with cocktails, anything that's kind of like a sour style cocktail that has in it lemon juice or lime juice, absolutely gonna work great with this one. Okay, so now let's get rid of these because we're gonna talk about some more examples and get more specific about the different ways of drinking gin. So now we're gonna talk about mixes, we're gonna talk about cocktails and finally, we're gonna talk about drinking gin neat. Yes, you can actually drink gin neat just like a whiskey. So let's talk about mixers first. Now, the starting place, it's gin, so we have to talk about tonic. Now, tonic used to be a relatively easy affair. I mean, you had Schweppes tonic water and that was about it. So it's just a matter of choosing the gin and then slapping any old tonic with it because they were all more or less the same. Then came along Fever Tree. Now we have premium tonic waters. Then after that, they had lemon tonic water, elderflower tonic water, aromatic tonic water. And now we've only just talked about one brand being Fever Tree. Then we have other brands like Ventimans Tonic Water or one from here in Australia, Long Ray's Tonic Water. As you can see, there are so many different brands and so many different flavors. So use that general rule of thumb that I talked about, complement or contrast, and you can pick one that goes great with it. Now, because of this, tonic water is a whole subject to itself. If you watch to the end, on the end screen, I've linked to a whole video that I made just dedicated to tonic water. Now, there are a lot of people out there that don't like tonic water, but so many other different flavored sodas work great with gin too. The first one is pretty obvious, and that's soda water or club soda or seltzer, depending on where in the world you're from and how you call it. Very clean, sparkling water, no other flavors. It goes with any gin you can think of and just allows that gin to do its thing. If you're one of those people that don't really like how strong tonic water is, you could opt for a light tonic water, which usually has a little bit less sugar and a little bit less of those bitter flavors. Or the other thing that people have never heard of is this idea of the Sonic, which is half soda water and half tonic water. You get the best of both worlds that way. But it doesn't have to end at tonic water because you can use any other flavored sodas that you really like. Other ones that I can go for, ginger ale, ginger beer, absolutely delicious. Again, spice tends to be a common botanical in gin. Sometimes it even is a botanical in gin. So you know it's gonna work absolutely perfectly. Why? Because we just talked about it, complementing ginger with spice botanicals, ginger with ginger botanicals. There we go, it fits our rule. And then one more mixer idea for you, we just talked about it, citrus. Why not orange juice or grapefruit juice? Again, two things which go really well with gin and are very common botanicals in gin. So again, complementing, you know it's gonna work. Snoop Dogg wrote a whole song on this, Gin and Juice, he was not wrong. As for garnishes to go with your gin and mixer combinations, let's break it down into five different flavor profiles. We've got fruity, we've got floral, we've got herbal, we've got spice, and we've got citrus. Now, by no means is this going to be an exhaustive list, but I'm gonna give you a few examples of each category. And the beauty of it 
is that all of these have pretty much been used as a gin botanical at some point. So fruity, you could have peaches, you could have berries, you could have mango even, or floral. You could have something like red apples or green apples, which cross that kind of boundary between fruity and floral, I find. Or you could even use flower petals themselves. Make sure they're edible. I've seen rose petals, dried rose petals in shops. That could be a good one too. As for herbal garnishes, you could have something like thyme or rosemary or bay leaves. I might even chuck cucumber in there because even though it's not strictly a herb, it has that kind of fresh grassy kind of flavor to it, which kind of reminds you of a herbaceous kind of savory flavor. Spice is an easy one because so many of them are botanicals in gin. You could have cardamom, you could have ginger, you could have cinnamon, you could have peppercorns. There really are no limits here. And then citrus outside of the obvious lemon or lime, you could have grapefruit, you could have orange, you could have mandarin. Again, no limitations. You could go a little bit more exotic and find a Buddha's hand or a yuzu. Absolutely delicious, all of them. Okay, so that's gin and mixer done. Let's talk about cocktails for a second now. Again, by no means is this gonna be an exhaustive list. I'm gonna break it down into three categories for you to give you some general rules of thumb. But if you want more inspiration at the end of the video on the end screen, I'll link another video for you. So we can kind of put cocktails into these three baskets. Those are highballs, which include gin and tonics and gin and mixers, but they include other cocktails that we didn't talk about, like ones like your Tom Collins's or your French 75's, where it's kind of a few other ingredients ingredients other than just a gin and a mix-up. The second one is sours, so anything which contains gin, lemon and sugar or a sugar substitute like a sweet liqueur or something like that. And then the last category is spirit forward or boozy cocktails. And those boozy cocktails can be things like hanky pankies, dry martinis or even negronis. Now highballs and sours are really easy because they're the most versatile. You can pretty much put any gin in those different cocktails and it'll work. Just again, with the flavors, use that rule of complement or contrast. Even sweeter gins can go great in highballs and sours because usually it has that acidity from lemon or lime to kind of balance out the sweetness. You may just need to, if it's a cocktail recipe that's designed with a dry gin in mind, you just need to drop the level of sugar if you use a slow gin or a sweet flavored gin. Now the spirit forward cocktails tend to be a little bit more tricky because for example, if you use a sweet gin in, in a classic dry martini, and I'm not talking about the fruity versions of martinis here, purely the dry martini, it's not gonna work great because it's just gonna be sweet and cloying. There's nothing to balance it out. So as a general rule of thumb, for these boozy drinks, you generally wanna stick on the side of the drier gins. However, there is one exception to that. If you have a more bitter ingredient in the cocktail, like Campari and a Negroni, you can get away with sweeter ingredients because the bitterness helps to balance out that sweetness. But again, any of the sweeter ingredients, like in a Negroni, the sweet vermouth, you might just need to drop it down a bit so that it balances out. So speaking of the dry martini, that brings me on to the final way to drink gin, and that that is just to drink gin as gin. Let me just bring back my neat gin here because absolutely it is possible to drink gin like this even if it isn't that common. And probably drinking gin like this warm and neat still isn't the best way to do it. I do it more just to analyze the flavors and the aromas that I get from the gin but there's some slight modifications you can do if you wanna get into drinking neat gin. Now the first gateway into this, we talked about it, the dry martini. Essentially, it's a tiny, tiny bit of vermouth, but mainly it's diluted cold gin. That's about it. A progression from that would be drinking gin simply on ice. So cold diluted gin again. And then the next step, you could drink gin straight from the freezer. People drink vodka straight from the freezer. Why don't you drink gin straight from the freezer? And I do think that white spirits generally tend to be better when they're served a little bit colder, purely because, you know, the alcohol is a little bit more upfront. So that just kind of balances out and make it more approachable. Even more so with gin, because you've got the alcohol content, and then on top of that, you've also got that big hit of botanicals, which you don't have in vodka. Definitely, it can be really complex and really a bit of a punch in the face if you have it warm and neat like this. But if you can drink it from the freezer, you're only one step away from drinking like this because freezer is simply just cold gin. And I do know many people that like to drink gin just like this for enjoyment. But as I said at the beginning, there's no right or wrong way to drink gin. Drink however makes you happy. So this was quite a complicated topic today. So you probably wanna click through here to learn more about tonic or even click through here to have some inspiration for cocktails. Cheers guys, see you next time.